Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today I want to talk about this pre-built PC that I purchased online without seeing the inside of it. Um, it is a bit risky but I was going based solely on the description and I thought it sounded pretty good for £50. Now it's got an i3-6098P inside based on the 1151 socket and I've wanted to look at this socket for a while. There's some great CPUs that I've never reviewed. Normally the older P suffix processors had no integrated graphics at all but this one does i think they're hd 510 as opposed to hd 530 graphics that you might find inside the 6100 for example it's also clocked at 100 megahertz less than the 6100 but it uses about three watts more or it's rated at three watts more in terms of tdp now i bought this as i say without seeing the inside because i thought an older i3 PC, what can go wrong? No graphics card included, which I knew, but it did have eight gigs of RAM, a hard drive, and everything else it needs to be operational. Now, when I opened this thing up, I actually laughed a little bit because everything is held together with one screw. There's one motherboard screw in here. Um, it's a Lenovo board, a Lenovo power supply, and basically what's happened is I think that someone has actually taken everything out of a Lenovo pre-built PC and just put it in this aftermarket case. The power supply is an 80 plus platinum, which is pretty good, 400 watts, so no complaints there. We've even got a six pin power connector for any graphics cards that we might want to add. The graphics card I have on my desk at the moment is a 470 and that's, yeah, that's just gonna blow up if I put that in there. We don't have the connections anyway. Um, but the biggest problem, apart from nothing being held together, I mean, even even the hard drive's in wonky. The motherboard's held on with one screw. The CPU cooler is just hanging off there as well. We've got this little USB adapter, which is sort of hanging out of the port that it's supposed to be plugged in. Um, maybe it just got shook about a bit during transit. I don't know. This fan, yeah, that's loose. <laughs> it's a bit of a disaster all round, but the biggest problem with this thing is that we have a proprietary power connector. Now Lenovo have a habit of doing this with certain models, not just them of course, it, it is the case with other pre-built occasionally too. Thankfully it's not as common these days as it used to be, but we've got this weird 10 pin, if I can get it. I can't pull it without the motherboard coming out. Let's see if we can dislodge it. No, it doesn't matter what I have here is an adapter. So the motherboard's got one of these, it's like a 10 pin power connector instead of the usual 24 pin, but I've bought this 10 to 24 pin adapter, and I'm sort of thinking that if I use it, it's gonna catch fire, or something horrible is gonna happen, but we've got no choice. Now, what I wanna do is add a discrete graphics card in here, and to do that, we're gonna need more than just a six pin connector. The only thing I could hook up to this at the moment that I have on hand is a 6500 XT. And while it could probably make the most of our CPU, it's going to suffer a bit due to the PCIe limitation. So I thought we'd add this into the mix, put a better PSU in here, and uh, maybe slot something like a 3050 inside this old thing and see what the 6098P is capable of as it is. What a, what a mess of a PC. I don't know who's put this together, but it could have all come loose during transit. I don't think five motherboard screws fell out, but there we go. Who knows? <laughs> Let's tidy things up a bit and test out some games. So I made a few changes to the system that I would make with any PC that I buy second hand and that was to replace the thermal paste on the CPU. I also turned the rear fan around so that it was acting as an exhaust fan and I put the RAM modules in slots 2 and 4 so that they were working correctly with each other. This CPU supports a maximum of 2133 MHz but the RAM we've got here is actually 2400 MHz but that doesn't matter at all. Now what I do appreciate about this system, although it wasn't perfectly executed in terms of taking everything out of the old Lenovo and putting it in here, is the fact that, well, 
Time and money was definitely spent. This person bought all of the right adapters to ensure all the USB ports would work and that everything could be connected from the case to the motherboard. I understand that the one screw attaching everything was in there now because it was actually quite difficult to get the motherboard sitting in here flush. The motherboard back plate wouldn't quite line up with the hole cut in the back of the case, but with a little bit more time and force, well, it seemed to line up and I was able to get the rest of the screws in place. This system actually worked fine as it was and the onboard Intel HD 510 graphics could actually run Fortnite with performance mode enabled, albeit with 25% resolution scaling, so it didn't look the best and there were certainly some stutters here and there but it wasn't the worst experience I've ever had in this game. Now to try and squeeze more performance out of this PC, I then decided to use the rather dodgy looking adapter. This allows us to connect a standard 24 pin power connector to the 10 pin motherboard connector, and it meant I could put my Seasonic Focus Plus Gold 550 watt power supply inside this case, which again was a little bit of a tight squeeze, but when it was hooked up, it worked just fine, and I slotted my 3050 into the system. We didn't really need anything more powerful because the CPU was the bottleneck all day anyway, but it did mean that we could run a few more modern games. Cyberpunk 2077 of course ran with 100% CPU utilization. This was expected. I was using the medium settings which would otherwise be fine for the RTX 3050 but with this two core hyper threaded processor we did experience some slowdown. To be honest I'm just glad that I finally have a Skylake motherboard. Is 1151 Skylake? I hope so otherwise I've made myself look rather silly there but I'm glad I finally got one of these socket boards because I can test some of the other processors that I've been wanting to look at for quite a while, including some i5s and i7s. Now that the adapter works as well and our system hasn't melted yet, I know that we can finally test these CPUs in combination with a more powerful graphics card. So that's good. GTA 5 ran fairly well. Again, the CPU was hitting around 90 to 100% utilization, which was to be expected. And our RTX 3050 wasn't doing much at all, running at about 30 to 50% utilization here. This is a fairly acceptable result. And if you did have an old PC with an i3 and you wanted to slot a better graphics card in the system, you could use something like a 3050, but it would make more sense if you were planning to upgrade the processor a little later on down the line because a Skylake i5 would actually still be fairly solid, I think, in games like this at least. To my surprise, Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered also ran and while the CPU was hitting 100% usage yet again, the stutter wasn't actually too bad. We were using the very low settings at 1080p and the game still looks fairly good good. Everything seems to be working just fine still and once again our PC adapter cable hasn't melted nor have there been any other issues with the system itself. So if you've got one of these you can use an adapter cable and power it with a regular PSU just fine. At least from what I've experienced so far I've got no long term data to work with yet. Finally then it's Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I often find with Red Dead that it runs fine outside of busier town areas like Valentine. The CPU usage will still be rather high but as you can see we're hitting about 60 to 70 frames per second here. With any dual core CPU or weaker quad cores however I found that the CPU usage will sort of peak at 99-100% and you will find that these older processors can struggle in areas filled with more NPCs. Our frame rate now has dropped to around 35, 40 FPS, which isn't ideal, but it's still somewhat playable if you can put up with the stutter. I might recommend actually capping things to 30 frames per second if you're using an older or weaker CPU like this one. Now that's all there really is to this video. I'm glad we were able to turn this PC into something a little more capable thanks to what was a five pounds 10 pin to 24 pin adapter hopefully 
we can add something more powerful to this Lenovo PC very soon, perhaps an i5 or i7, because they really are dropping in price and should be compatible with this board. Thank you very much for watching this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.